India out is not a campaign slogan anymore, it is now government policy. This cannot be seen as an Indian military presence on the island like it's being pointed out, like this so-called soldiers. Without naming India, Mohammad Moizu pledged to remove the Indian military presence from this small but strategically important island nation. Now, Maldives sits in a strategically vital position in the middle of the Indian Ocean. China's aggressive manoeuvring has been a cause of concern among its neighbours, whether it's South China Sea or the Indian Ocean. Hi everybody, the Indian Ocean is by far one of the most important regions in the geopolitics of the world and it's been significant not just in the 21st century but ever since the 13th century. In fact, an historian Alfred Mahan once said, whoever conquers the Indian Ocean will dominate the whole of Asia. And now, the geopolitical war in the Indian Ocean has been heating up in 2023. And this time, it's because of a small island country that we all know as Maldives. Last August, India noted the presence of a Chinese surveillance vessel Yuan Wang-5 in the Indian Ocean. This further prompted the Indian Navy to raise the red flag against the Chinese activities. At any point of time, we have between anything between three to six uh, Chinese warships uh, in the Indian Ocean region. The large presence of Chinese units in the Indian Ocean region. On 4th of October 2023, the election results of Maldives was announced. And the moment the new president came to power, it was bad news for India. Because as soon as he came to power, he asked the Indian military forces to withdraw from Maldives. And guess who's happy because of this? China. The Maldives elected a new president. Among his many campaign promises was India out to expel Indian soldiers from the Maldives. The new president-elect is widely reported as being pro-China. Now, if you look at Maldives, it's a very small country. It's just 298 square kilometers in area, which is half the size of Mumbai. So some people might ask, dude, India and China are such mammoth countries. Why would they give a fish about Maldives? Well, as it turns out, Maldives is located at by far one of the most important points in the geopolitics of the world. And considering the Russia-Ukraine war, the Arab-Israeli tension and the China-Taiwan tension, these geopolitical points have become more important to defend than ever. And Maldives specifically has been so so important that even though Maldives has a GDP of just 5.4 billion dollars, India has given a 100 million dollar loan to Maldives. And at the same time, China has been building roads and bridges and even hospitals for Maldives along with a $1.5 billion loan. So the question is, what is so special about Maldives that it is being coddled by two giant economic powers of Asia? Why is the location of Maldives such an important point in the geopolitics of the world? What has this new president brought to the table? And most importantly, now that we've been asked to leave Maldives, how does it make us weak in front of China? This video is brought to you by ChatGPT plus Communication Masterclass course. People, if you are somebody who struggles to speak your ideas out in public, if you are somebody who lacks the confidence to speak in public, or if you are somebody who often mumbles while presenting your thoughts, I would highly recommend you to join our Communication Masterclass course. This course is a six weeks course whereby I will take you step by step from a beginner's level all the way up to a TEDx level presentation skill. The best part is that if you have any doubts, I will personally talk to you during our weekly live sessions to help you overcome every fear you have. Cherry on the cake, you will also get special access to the chat GPT module whereby I will teach you how to use the secret prompts in chat GPT for storytelling, for business research and even English speaking. This is why now it's communication masterclass plus chat GPT course put together. So if you also want to master your art of communication and if you want to present your ideas in the most powerful manner possible, come join our Communication Masterclass course using the link below. And I will see you in the live session. Chalo, let's start from the basics and understand what is so special about Maldives that two giant economic powers are trying to please them. You see guys, the Indian Ocean has some of the world's most important SLOCs or sea lines of communication. These sea lines carry two-third of the world's oil shipment, one-third of the bulk cargo traffic and half of the world's container shipment. This is the reason why Alfred Mahan said, whoever conquers the Indian Ocean will dominate the whole of Asia because they can take control of the most important choke points of the world. And guess what? Maldives sits right in the middle of the Indian Ocean, which makes its location very, very significant. And this is because of the modern trade routes. 
So let's dig deep and try to understand the significance of Maldives location. You see guys, sea lines are just like highways in the ocean. So just like highways connect different cities on the land, sea lines of communication connect the most important trade points in the ocean. So if somebody blocks these lines, then they can choke the world trade itself. Now here some people might say, bro listen, we use a highway because we cannot hop, skip and jump over trees and hills. But in an ocean, if somebody blocks one route, we can easily take another route, right? And when the ocean is so goddamn huge, why are these sea lines important? Well, you are right. You can take routes as you like in the ocean. But if you see this map, you'll notice that most of the SLOCs are nothing but displacements between two points. As in, they are the shortest distances between the two points that they are connecting. So if you do not use the SLOCs, as the routes get longer, your time and cost of shipping will increase. And secondly, sometimes SLOCs may not be the shortest route, but they could be the safest routes in the ocean. So SLOCs are often chosen based on water depths, predictable currents and the absence of obstacles like reefs or ice. So calculative route data enables the ship to navigate with lesser risk. So it's not just about time and money, but also about safety. If this is very very clear to you, let's understand why is Maldives such an important player in the global economy. If you see this map, the 8 degree channel which is just above Maldives, it is a critical choke point. And in this map you will notice that most of the SLOCs which are going from Asia to the Middle East, Europe and other western nations, they are passing through channel 8 or channel 9. So Maldives is positioned like a toll gate in the middle of the western Indian Ocean choke points. So it has the Gulf of Eden and the state of Hormuz on one side and the state of Malacca on the other side. So basically Maldives is very close to the shipping routes of the world. So just because Maldives is closer to a few sea lines, why are India and China buttering up to Maldives? How does this make any sense at all? Well, in geopolitics, it does make sense because islands near important sea routes are not just islands, but they are also acting as unsinkable aircraft carriers. So to ordinary people like you and me, Andaman and Nicobar Islands might seem like just another bunch of islands. But from a military standpoint, these islands are huge aircraft carriers that cannot be sent easily. And this is where the importance of Maldives comes in. You see, whoever has a presence in the Maldives, they will have an unsinkable aircraft carrier near the 9th and the 8th degree channel. And using these points, the Navy can monitor and secure SLOCs during peacetime and at the same time, they would have an option to cut off the enemy's access to these SLOCs during wartime. Meaning, during war, supply of essential goods can be cut off to paralyze the enemy who is far away. In fact, this strategy has even been published in the official naval doctrine of India. And this sea lane is very very important for India and China both because 50% of India's external trade, 80% of energy imports, 84% of China's energy requirement and more than 65% of the world's oil trade is transported through these lanes. So the country which has a major influence on this island will eventually have the opportunity to set up permanent posts to monitor and detect enemies, gather intelligence, track shipping trends in the region and also get the subsurface oceanic data for submarine deployments. So basically, India and China could build a freaking fort in the ocean using Maldives. This is the reason why this 8th and 9th degree channel are so so important for India, China and the world itself. If this is very very clear to you, let's move on to the next part which is the current political situation in the Maldives. Now to understand this matter deeper, you need to understand something that's very basic when it comes to the domestic politics of Maldives. Turns out India has historically had a great relationship with Maldives. But from 1985 onwards, Chinese companies began entering the project contracting business in the Maldives. And by 2001, the total value of their contracted projects reached 46.37 million dollars. Now for a country which had a GDP of just $870 million in 2001, $46 million was almost 5.3% of their GDP. So this was a big big deal for Maldives. And when the first democratic elections were held in 2008 in Maldives, one party would campaign as anti-India or pro-China and the other party would present itself as pro-India or anti-China. So in 2008, when Mohammad Nasheed came to power, it was good for India because he was a pro-India candidate. And by leveraging his inclination towards India, in 2008, Maldives and India signed a defense cooperation agreement. And according to this agreement, India would install 26 radars on the small coral islands, out of which 10 have already been installed. 
and the relations between India and Maldives were so good that India even agreed to provide Maldives with a Dhruv helicopter and help them establish a 25 bed military hospital in Maldives. And today, the total investment of India in Maldives stands at millions of dollars. So for years, India has focused on neighborhood first and Maldives has focused on India first policy. So India and China both continue to invest and used Maldives as their battleground to enjoy domination in the Indian Ocean region, which is right now very, very important for global trade. But recently, something crazy has happened with Maldives when they got a pro-China president named Mohamed Muizu. And because he's backed by China, he has asked 75 Indian military personnel to leave Maldives. President-elect Dr. Mohamed Muizu of the Maldives who's seen as having pro-China leanings, made his first statement regarding the removal of foreign soldiers from the Maldives within the confines of the law. Dr. Mizu has fought his elections on this so-called India Out campaign and now he is living up to his campaign promise. And you know what? If this continues, not just India, but many other countries would be threatened by China's dominance in the Maldives and the Indian Ocean region. Because as we all know, China has already laid the foundation with its string of pearls theory. So now, it has the Gwadar port in Pakistan, Hambantota port in Sri Lanka, Chittago port in Bangladesh, Djibouti military base in Djibouti, and Bagamoyo port in Tanzania. So now, with Maldives being added to the string of pearls, the question is, what will India do to counter China's influence and regain its influence in the Indian Ocean? This is what we have to wait and watch because, like I said, considering the Russia-Ukraine war, the Arab-Israeli tension and the China-Taiwan tension, these choke points have become more important to defend than ever. So all you have to do is wait and watch and see what does India do in response to this Chinese strategy. That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to the like button in order to make YouTube ever happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.